Mr. Speaker, nice to see you. Greta, good to be with you. And uh, so you have a new office, new job since I've last seen you, big job? Big job. Uh, how different is it than being minority leader? I mean, what, what surprises you? Well, the, the decisions you make uh, are real and, and kind of reverberate throughout the institution. So you've got to be a little more cautious about what you say and when you say it. Uh, but other than that, uh, it really hasn't changed a great deal. You know, thank goodness, we're only 24 hours in a day and only seven days in a week. Is it what you expected? Uh, no, nothing has really surprised me uh, about the job, uh, at least not yet. Okay, spending. We have a current national debt of $14.14 trillion, um, and we now have a new continuing resolution president has to sign it, but that's only going to get us through two weeks. Well, we've got uh, a spending problem here. We've got a debt problem. First thing we have to do is we've got to solve the, the spending problem. And that means getting our arms around the discretionary side, that one-third of the budget that funds the government and keeps all the agencies going. Uh, and then in about four to six weeks, we'll begin uh, to deal with next year's budget. Um, we really have to focus in on that two-thirds of the budget uh, that's really driving uh, the deficit and the debt to the levels that we see. I've said for months, we need, it's time to have an adult conversation with the American people about the big challenges that face us. Uh, when you look at Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, these are important programs for tens of millions of Americans. But they're not sustainable at their current levels. They're not affordable for our kids and grandkids. Uh, we're going to have to make some changes. Uh, but I think the first step is laying out the size of the problem. And here in the coming weeks, I expect you'll see more and more from our team laying out just how big this problem is. All right, well, we only have a two-week budget, though, essentially, the continued resolution that's passed. And so we're really going gonna to go right back into this, trying to figure out what to do for the rest of the year. Um, what's the holdup? Why, why can't we get a budget to carry us through the rest of the year? Well, understand how we got into this problem. You know, last year, Democrats didn't pass a budget. Uh, they didn't do any appropriation bills to fund the government from last October through next September. Why didn't they do that? Uh, I don't know. You'll have to ask them. All I know is that they funded the government through March the 4th. I kind of dropped this in our lap. Uh, we did our work several weeks ago when we passed a $100 billion worth of spending cuts from what the President requested for this year. And we passed it over to the Senate. Uh, they haven't acted. We decided to move the short-term CR to keep the government open, uh, but while at the same time uh, cut spending. So we cut $4 billion. And while they moaned and groaned about it, uh, they all seem to vote for it. Uh, and I'm hopeful that the Senate will get serious uh, about, about finishing out this year. We can't go through this every two weeks. Uh, but the House has acted. When is the Senate going to act? Well, you've been sharing, at least today, a few barbs back and forth with uh, Senator Harry Reid, the Majority Leader. Um, you know, at least uh, his office and your office. Well, not really. Uh, listen. Senator Reid's got a tough job. I understand he's got a tough job. I got my challenges on our side. But the House has acted. And it's really hard to go in a negotiation when the other side doesn't have a position. And I'm hopeful that uh, the Senate Democrats will come up with some position so we can begin to have real negotiations. We've had conversations now for weeks. Uh, but uh, I, don't, I don't know where the Senate, uh, the Senate Democrats are uh, as we come to how do we work this out? Well, the president has suggested that Vice President Biden um, speak with the, the leadership on both sides, the House and the Senate. Um, what do you think of that idea? Listen, I think the vice president uh, would better spend his time if he sat down with Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi, and come up with a Democrat position. Like I said before, it's hard to sit down and negotiate. We've done our work. I know where we are. They know where we are. Uh, but we don't know what their position is. But he'd have, it'd be a far better use of his time. Are you saying that you're negotiating with yourself, essentially, that they have no stated position? Is that, is that what you're saying? Yes, they don't have a position. So how do I know where they are and what we should negotiate from and, and uh, what the, the right number is? I have no idea. How much wiggle room do you have here in the House? Because um, you certainly have about 87 new freshmen um, who uh, seem to be very uh, strong in their position. It doesn't seem like you have a whole lot of wiggle room on your numbers. Uh, our goal is to keep the government open and cut spending. The American people know that spending is out of control. 
We had a GAO report come out yesterday talking about all the, the duplicative programs in a number of different areas. Uh, there is enough government here to cut. Uh, it's time to keep, uh, to, to save taxpayers uh, money. And it's been interesting to watch this debate over the last couple of months. Uh, when it started, uh, you know, they didn't want to cut anything. Uh, now we've got them at least agreeing that we've got to cut spending. The only question is how much. You mentioned the GAO report. Um, Senator Reid said that he was, I don't know, happy or proud or something about Senator Coburn asking for this report. I suspect most Americans think when they look at both Republicans and the Democrats, it's like, are you kidding? Um, you didn't know that, the, that there was duplication of programs, that there was overlap, that there was waste, there was fraud. Um, how, how do the people get the point across to the members of both sides? Do well, I, think the Amer I think the American people spoke loudly last November. Uh, they want action and they want it now. Uh, this is just another example of uh, the kind of nonsense that's gone on here for some time. Part of this driven by the committee process in the House and Senate, a uh, part of it driven by the way the government is organized. Uh, and I think it's time for us to take a serious look uh, at how we organize so that we don't end up with all of these overlapping and duplicative programs. How does that happen, though? Because if, if you assign it to a committee, we got another committee now to study it. I mean, it, it, how do we actually sort of almost you know, get a knife and, and sort of you know, slice out the stuff that's duplicate? I mean, well, if, we we could, have, if we have six programs and are doing the same thing, I think most no, people agree it's a bad idea. No, I, think we could, uh, I think we could slice that and solve, the, solve this problem. Uh, but if we, don't, uh, if we don't reorganize the way we do what we do, it's going to happen again and again and again. Uh, so I think it's time to step back uh, and take a look. The President, uh, during the State of the Union address, said that he would submit a plan uh, to Congress on how to reorganize the administrative branch of government. I think uh, uh, that's a good idea, and I'm awaiting uh, his report. When is this plan coming? Has he said when it's coming? I don't think he said when, but he made it clear in the State of the Union that he wants to deal with us. Well, I I think, though, that we sort of hear this all the time from everybody, you know, for years. Ever since I was in college, I heard about waste and fraud in Congress and how, you know, different politicians say, I'm going to go to Congress? No, no, I mean, in, I mean throughout the entire government is what I meant. I think there's a lot of criticism of people that about waste and fraud and, you know, when someone's going to get to Washington, he or she is going to clean it up and it doesn't get cleaned up. It's hard to get your arms around. And again, mostly driven by the fact of, of we've got agencies uh, that some cases do a lot of the same things. And why do we have this other agency doing the same thing that another agency is doing? We've got committees here. There are 122 job or uh, uh, math and science programs uh, that are in uh, 23 different agencies. Now, listen, we're all interested in having more mathematicians, more scientists, uh, but uh, there, th this makes no sense. I took this project on when I was the chairman of the Educational Workforce Committee. Uh, it was time to bring this down, but I only had jurisdiction over a couple of them. Uh, all the other committees had them, and this is where uh, we get into this problem. Uh, too many committees with overlapping jurisdiction. So you're going to get rid of that? Got a plan in mind. Plan in mind. Okay, good. All right. Now, um, in terms of the um, the uh, plan, the, G the GOP plan in terms of cutting, um, Federal Reserve Chair Ben Bernanke said today. Um, that the House GOP spending plan would likely cost a couple hundred thousand jobs. A number he said he, that is not trivial, and he didn't have exact number. Uh, Mark Zandi of Moody's um, says, he's an economist, says that it would slash 700,000 jobs. And Goldman Sachs, uh, is, they say that uh, the GOP plan is going to uh, cut the GDP by 2%. That seems rather bleak. These are all of the people who thought the stimulus plan two years ago was a great idea and would help create jobs in America. It hadn't happened. So they're dead wrong? I've got uh, John Taylor at Stanford University and 47 other economists suggesting that cutting spending will lead to a, a, a better environment for job creation in, in, in America. Listen, we've got a spending problem. We've got to cut spending. The more, the more spending we cut is the more money that's available in the private sector uh, to help create jobs. Do you think the president thinks there's a spending problem? I mean, when you sit down and talk to him, or, or does he have a different I ideology? I talked to him yesterday. And what do you say? Uh, I think he understands that we have a spending problem. And so do you have an idea to say, uh, Mr. Speaker, this is what I think we should do? No, we didn't get that specific. But I, I, while I don't want to get into the details of my conversation with the president, 
Uh, I do think he understands there's a spending problem. How often do you talk to the president? Oh, every couple of weeks or so. How about to uh, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid? A little more often. Like daily? Uh, not quite, yeah. Is it warm and fuzzy or is it cold and chilly? No, I've got a very good relationship uh, with the, the Senate Democrat leader. Uh, he's got a tough job to do. I understand he's got a tough job. I got my own, I got my own issues over here and trying to get uh, things done. But I'm hopeful uh, that we'll be able to, to get the last year's work finished so that we can get on with this year's work. The Defense of Marriage Act, um, the President has said that he's not going to enforce it or he's not going to, he's not going to fight it in the courts, um, the challenges to it. Um, you, you, or at least the GOP on this side, has said that you may hire a special counsel to do the job that the federal government, that the executive branch won't do. Um, are you going to hire someone? A DOMA is the law of the land. It was, it was passed overwhelmingly in both the House and the Senate. And I think it's outrageous for the president to, to say, well, we're not going to enforce it. It's the law of the land. It's the job of the Justice Department uh, to defend uh, the work of our government. And I, I just think it's outrageous. Uh, we're looking at our options, what's available to us uh, to intervene. Uh, the, short, uh, the long and short of this is that we are going to intervene. Uh, the question is, how do we do it? Have you had any conversations with the executive branch, with the attorney general or the president about that? No. So everyone's going to find out when, later this week? What, uh... I'm hopeful we'll have an answer here in the next couple of days.